It's Wes, welcome to this video. Today we're gonna to be talking about transitioning into filmmaking with the Fuji X-T4, which I'm filming on right now. And uh, so there's a variety of things that I wanna talk about. Um, shooting handheld is one, image stabilization is another, the Photo Deox uh, adapter, which allows you to use Canon EF lenses. So that's awesome. And the last thing is manual focus versus autofocus. Let's jump right into it. First, let's talk about the Fuji X-T4. Why this camera? Simply put, the image quality. So I rented a Fuji X-T4, which was an amazing experience. I mean, I started shooting with it when I picked it up from uh, the person I rented it from in LA, and right away I fell in love with what I saw on the LCD uh, screen. I just, I thought it represented the light that was out in front of me outside the camera in such an amazing way it won me made me want to shoot more and so i really enjoyed renting that camera and so what i did is i returned it and i picked up the fuji x 100v which is slightly cheaper and uh it's a great camera it has the film simulations from fuji built into it, it has the same exact sensor as the xt4 and uh, it's a great light camera for uh, street photography. I started to carry it everywhere. I started to have, to have new content for my Instagram and really enjoyed it. And so around this time, I'm personally transitioning from mainly photography and to adding filmmaking. And so I wanted a camera that I could take on this journey. I'm gonna uh, make a, a narrative film next year. Uh, my wife is writing the screenplay for that or the, the young adult novel and I'm, uh, helping adapt it to a screenplay. But I really wanted uh, a camera that I thought would help tell that story and just give me the image quality. So I loved what Fuji um, offered. Now, the thing is, Canon EOS R is an amazing camera and I use it for all of my YouTube videos, um, except for right now. Uh, but in the, in the past two years, I've used it for all of my uh, YouTube content. And it's an amazing camera for YouTube. And you can use an external recorder and record in 10-bit 422. So an external recorder is an extra piece of gear. Um, I happen to have access to one, but I just never transitioned into mastering the Atomos Ninja uh, 5. And so it was an extra piece of gear, it was extra learning, and I just never got there because I didn't really need it for YouTube. <music> Moving into filmmaking, what I know about myself and extra gear is it's really better to stick with a simple production. So my sweet spot is one camera in my hands. Now we're going to talk about image stabilization and gimbals and stabilize, uh, uh, stabilizers or sliders and things like that. And that's also part of that equation. But for me, I wanted a camera that recorded high quality images in body internally. Now the difference between the 422 and the 420, as I understand it, is when you move from 8-bit, which the Canon EOS R records internally, that's 256 color variations of green, of red, and blue. And so that is something like 16 million color variations. Now when you move to 10-bit, you get 1,024 variations of red, green, and blue, which is something like a billion color variations. So there's a lot more color variations to help um, you, you capture what's in front of you. Now, not every device is 10-bit, so that's, that's something um, <laughs> you might consider. Um, I found that I could tell the difference in color grading. I have a 5K monitor from LG, and I could see the difference. Um, it renders 10-bit. And so I wanted that advantage. 
Now, Fuji, uh, the X-T4 captures 420, which means for every two lines of pixels, it samples two from the top line and zero from the bottom line. And a 422 would be two samples from the top line, two from the bottom line. So it doesn't have as much color sampling. Um, it fills in the rest approximating by what it samples on the top line. So 422 is better, um, although I can still record externally with the Atomos Ninja 5 on this uh, X-T4 as well as the Canon EOS R. But again, that's extra gear and it's something that, yeah, maybe I'll get there, but not yet. <laughs> So I just want to focus on great image quality. I love what I saw on the back of the screen when I ran the Fuji X-T4 and I thought it would be great to help me tell narrative stories different than YouTube. But let's just admit something. We shouldn't get stuck on specifications like the image quality if we don't have composition and exposure dialed in. Really the image quality is secondary to telling a story. If you don't have a good compelling story, if you're not able to capture that in the camera, then the image quality is secondary. If you aren't telling a compelling story and if you aren't getting proper exposure with your camera, then you're putting the cart before the horse essentially. All right, so let's back up. So we've talked a little bit about the color, but I just want to talk about um, handheld shooting. Now for me, I have access to a gimbal, I have access to a slider. I like what they bring to a production, but the types of films I'm gonna be making it is gonna be a one person shoot or it's gonna be one person on the camera and other people doing other aspects. Um, and so every piece of gear means more for me to carry and more for me to worry about. And so I'm going to basically be shooting handheld. So I needed something that had image stabilization. Now, the perfect choice is the Canon R6. I felt the price was a little bit out of my range. Um, so uh, that's why, because of the reasons I mentioned before, uh, having rented the Fuji X-T4 along with, this has 6.5 stops of image stabilization, depending on the lens. I thought this would be a good complement, a good move from the Canon EOS R to the X-T4 with that add, added stabilization, given that I love the image quality. And so I made that move. So with a new um, camera, new color science, new log footage, there's a journey of learning how to grade that footage. And so that's a journey I'm on. Um, and I'm gonna talk a little bit more about that later. I've decided everything that I shoot on the Fuji, I'm gonna edit in DaVinci Resolve because that's a software that I'm choosing for the future filmmaking journey because I wanna unlock the power that it has to offer with um, color grading. I've also on the stills for the Fuji decided to use Capture One. So that's something uh, I've heard the Fuji RAW files do better in Capture One. And so that's a commitment. So I have software learning journeys that we can talk about in a later place. Um, but really what I want to talk about now is because I'm shooting handheld, I am also choosing to pull focus manually. And that, so that's something different. I've always relied on autofocus. When I got the Canon EOS R, it was like amazing to me how well the autofocus worked. But now moving into more narrative filmmaking with planned camera movements, less spontaneous. Like for example, I'll, I'll um, give an example. I help Pablo Buenos Dias imagery. I'll put his channel up here or in the description. I help shoot um, some of his YouTube videos, handheld talking head videos or capturing B-roll. And it's one thing to rely on autofocus in those situations where I'm shooting fairly spontaneously, capturing something in the moment. And it's another thing to plan camera movements and to actually have the focus do exactly what you want when you want. So with Pablo, for example, I can capture, you know, um, 10 clips and he might use one to help tell that story. In the way I'm planning to shoot narrative film, I wanna plan the shots ahead and I'm gonna pull focus to do what I want, uh, to have the camera do what I want for that planned camera movement, that planned camera composition, that planned camera shot. So all that to say is I have to learn to use manual focus. Now, so this seems like going backwards, the capability of the cameras are um, so uh, advanced that surely autofocus is the way to go. 
But I know that as a single shooter and somebody who wants control over the story I'm telling, I don't want the focus point to jump and I don't wanna have that happen when I'm creating a film. I wanna have control over that. So I'm shooting handheld, I need the image stabilization, but I'm also learning to shoot with manual focus. So as I said before, having the camera in my hand, not having a gimbal, not having a slider, um, that's, that's my sweet spot. I need to keep it simple at this point. And so I'm dedicated to this next step of um, filmmaking by shooting handheld. Now, uh, the footage you've been seeing along the way here is shot on the 23 millimeter lens on the Fuji, which is an F2 lens. It's also using autofocus and you should be able to tell that it's also i didn't have an nd filter i just cranked the uh i think i put the shutter speed on on automatic so it's just doing automatic shutter speed to adjust for the um to adjust the exposure and then in the second part of this uh clips that you're seeing is i switched to the canon 85 mil with the photo die deox photo deox ef to um x mount adapter And so I put this on here, I put it on the Fuji X-T4, and I didn't know this ahead of time, actually, it requires manual focus. And so the second part of this footage, I shot with manual focus, um, but there was another complication. And just allow me to be uh, totally honest about my learning, uh, the 85 mil is something more like a 150 mil. I'm shooting with a zoom lens, essentially, and so the camera shake, even though I have um, some stops of stabilization, the camera shake is pronounced in those clips. However, the lens looks amazing. So I'm starting to learn handheld, pulling focus manually, and, um, and here's the other thing. I didn't grade any of this footage. I just shot it in Eterna Cinema, one of the film simulations. I think it looks beautiful. Um, I might have pulled down just the, the blacks, the shadows a little bit. Uh, to give it a little more contrast, but it looks gorgeous out of camera. So this is part of my learning journey, is right now I'm putting off learning color grading for later. I'm learning DaVinci Resolve, and I'm learning manual focus and handheld narrative filmmaking techniques. So there's a lot going on here. So I, I thank you for joining me. Thank you for uh, watching this video. Um, if you use the X-T4 for filmmaking, narrative filmmaking, I'd be interested in connecting with you. Uh, my Instagram is at West Crucial Photo. And if you like this video, give it a like, give it a thumbs up, ring the bell to get notifications about other videos. And we'll see you in the next video. Bye.